Hi Pisces, Sun and Rising. Welcome to your June 2022 Astro Update. It's Raina here. So um, I, I would say for Pisces, one of the big news items is that you're going to have your ruler Neptune go retrograde. I'll get to that at the end of the reading because uh, it is, I, I like to do things chronologically, but I just thought that that would be um, so, something of interest to you guys. And um, starting on the third, we have Mercury going direct. Yay. In uh, Taurus, 28 degrees of Taurus to be exact. And that for you is the third house of communication. So that's the house that it rules. And um, so this may be Something that has, um, I, I really think for Pisces, this Mercury retrograde may be family oriented because it began in the fourth house in Gemini. And of course, this is a general reading. So, uh, your house placements might be a little bit different than how I'm characterizing it. But, um, in general, we would just say, uh, it began in Gemini, the fourth house, which can be the mother and the family of origin in general. And then it went back to the third, which can be siblings. So there could be like misunderstandings. There could be, um, I would even say conflict only because the, what's happening, what, what could be happening is that there's something to do with, uh, an actual, a piece of real estate. So, you know, fourth house can be home matters. And if the, if your family of origin is connected to that, so either one of your parents or both of them, and, um, there was some kind of misunderstanding or disagreement even, uh, that may have led to further issues with, uh, siblings. Now, Usually Mars um, indicates conflict within the houses. So I don't want to characterize it like that. It's more like, you know how sometimes you have a disagreement with somebody because you're not really understanding where they're coming from. One of those types of deals. And another thing that could be happening is about your home and neighbors. Okay, because the third house can be neighbors and so let's say that um, there was something that you wanted to do with the home. Maybe you wanted to renovate it. Um, I do feel that for some Pisces people, somewhere down the road this year, you may be renovating your home because Mars is uh, having an extended stay in Gemini. And because of the nature of retrogrades, as it approaches that October 30th time when the official retrograde begins, um, it will start slowing down and it will, it won't, um, transit as quickly and therefore it will linger in Gemini for quite a, a few months. And the, what makes this very, um, significant is Mars, only retrogrades every couple of years. And normally it goes through a sign in about six weeks or so. So this will be like pretty, pretty uh, impressive that it is going to be in Gemini for probably like six months altogether, which is like mind blowing. So, um, you know, Mars can simply, it doesn't have to be conflict, but it can be. And it also can be, um, extra activity. So, um, more activity around the home and maybe including some sort of renovation or other project. And perhaps the neighbors have some say in that, like, Oh, you're going to put an addition on your home. Okay. So we're going to have to hear hammering, you know, for eight hours a day, you know, those kinds of Things. So, but things can get resolved in by mid June because that's when Mercury comes out of its shadow around um, the 17th or 18th of June. 
but it goes direct on the third in the third house. And um, the very next day, Saturn goes retrograde. But because Saturn isn't a personal planet, it's not going to be particularly significant for us individually, although there it will, depending on, you know, what house we're, we're talking about. So in general, when we're talking about um, Pisces individuals, this is the 12th house. And uh, Saturn has been... Saturn has been retrograding, I mean, um, you know, transiting the 12th house or in the sign of Aquarius for last couple of years. Now, for Pisces, this is your domain. So um, normally I would say dark night of the soul time, but in this case, I would say that the person may be finding themselves having more structure in their life because you're not afraid to look at things that other people might be afraid to look at. In other words, well, I, you know, maybe that's a little bit of a broad statement. You know, uh, Pisces people can be escapists for sure, but Pisces is no stranger a lot of times to things that, that are, um, you know, connected to trauma or, other types of suffering. And a lot of people, their main goal in life is to avoid suffering, which may, it may seem like a sane goal, but the problem is, is that, um, you can't escape suffering. So when people attempt to do so, they're, re it's really folly for them to even, um, think about it. And, um, yeah, so I feel like with this retrograde, um, what I, you know, Saturn in the 12th house can be very good for Pisces people who find themselves with addictions. And I'm saying this kind of tongue in cheek because I really think that Pisces, you know, is, you know, because you are, you tend to have escapist tendencies, um, it's, it's very tempting to, you know, alter yourself chemically. And sometimes that can be habitual. And even if it's something that is not considered physically addictive, um, it can still cloud the judgment or otherwise make the person um, not really tuned in with other people at, you know, on the same wavelength and that can affect relationships. Well, you know, it's, there are certain things that, um, do are detrimental. Um, and they kind of, they might keep a person from being emotionally mature because they're always trying to resist their emotions and let the emotions kind of run through them. And so when you create resistance, it creates a lot of, um, I think, uh, negative, um, you know, circumstances ultimately. And so anyway, um, <laughs> sorry for that little lecture, but the reason I say this is because when Saturn goes retrograde, I feel like this is going to be a time when it's not about the outer things that you impose. You know, whenever there's a retrograde, it internalizes that, what that planet represents. And so for Saturn, it's about discipline. A lot of times discipline is something that is coming from the outside in. Um, you know, other people want you to stop drinking or smoking weed or whatever, and you want to please them or you, um, you know, if for some reason it's, it's, there's like a rule that you can't do it, um, and all of those things. And that is unfortunate because uh, outer motivation is not true motivation. While it can be, you know, a catalyst 
there has to be a desire within to do these things. And it doesn't have, we don't have to talk about, um, you know, substance abuse. We can talk about, um, so many things like even a relationship, maybe you're in a relationship that is, uh, destructive and uh, people around you have told you, look, don't bring that person around me. I don't think they treat you properly. Um, you know, I just don't want anything to do with that other person. And so you may be shying away from that person because of influences from family and friends. But the ultimate thing is when you can make that decision for yourself. And even like spiritual disciplines, there's so much, you know, the 12th house is more spiritual than religious. I would call the religious the ninth house. But you could say that there, there could be some of the theme of religion because Jupiter is the ancient ruler of uh, Pisces. And um, so we'll always have that connection with the 12th, even though Neptune is the main planet that we associate Pisces with. And so, yeah, there could be that kind of doctrine, doctrinal, however you say it, um, influence that makes a person want to obey a certain set of um, rules and do's and don'ts because it feels really safe, you know, to have those boundaries. But the Pisces person knows that they have outgrown that, that they are, you know, because in a sense, when you forge your own path, you might be saying to yourself, what if I'm doing this all wrong? You know, if I follow the rules of an organized religion, then I know I'm, it's a very clear, uh, path because they have things that they deem okay and things that are considered wrong. And if I don't, if I obey it a hundred percent, then I know that I'm going to, um, avoid hell or what or whatever the fear is. So these kinds of things can be um, very profound uh, that you are internalizing. So I just wanted to kind of point that out. I don't know how many Pisces people have felt that Saturn influence in their 12th house. Um, on the 13th, Mercury goes back into Gemini, just a few days away from coming out with shadow. So it's back in that home front sector, the fourth house. So any kind of documents or, you know, paperwork, whatever, these things can get resolved in due time. Um, because, you know, it's, it's really going to start to, I, I really feel around the solstice time and even a little, few days before that, um, you're going to start, I, I really feel everybody's going to start to feel like things are speeding up and, it, and it's, um, not a moment too soon because, um, you know, that lack of momentum can feel like you're walking through molasses. It can, it can feel like you're not making any progress. And so with the cardinal energy of the solstice that can help as well. Um, on the 14th, we have a full moon at 23 degrees of Sag. Again, this is, um, Mutable energy. This is coming from the other direction, Pisces. This is the career sector. Okay, so you have full moons in Sag every year, um, either in May or June. But um, this one may be... Uh, I'm trying to think if... Well, I don't know if there's... A, you've had some hits to this area because of eclipses in Sag and in Gemini the last couple of years. This year, not so much, but, you know, 2020 and 2021. And, uh, yeah, so this is a full moon, can bring recognition, can bring something to a head with your career, um, some kind of realization that you have career-wise. On the 21st, the sun goes into Cancer. That's the solstice. And you have uh, Cancer in your fifth house of romance and creativity, Pisces. Wow, what a great time 
to have personal planets in the fifth. Um, I was remarking on another science video that I really love the summer solstice. I just love the idea of it. And I was mentioning how uh, I was looking something up about the midsummer night, you know, that, that thing. And they said that that was the solstice. And I was saying, well, why would it be the midsummer when it's supposed to be the beginning of the summer? But I, you know, it, it's so funny because uh, I know so, some of you are, are experiencing the winter solstice, which blows my mind. But the reason that I think it's so great for Pisces is because the fifth house is a house of pleasure. And, you know, if you are in the heat of the summer, um, there's a lot of joy that is generated by um, summer days and nights. And I'm sure a lot of you would agree. Now, of course, there can be like really uh, steamy times as well, where it's just un almost unbearable. And uh, those of us who live in the Chicago area, we have experienced a lot of 90 degree days so far, which is unusual for this early in the year. And I'm recording this in May. So that's the kind of thing um, where I live, where the summer can get really crazy hot. We have a lot of extreme weather around here. Um, and so for some of you, it's going to be more moderate. I remember going to camp in Michigan and it would be really cold in the morning. I mean, like probably in the fifties and then it would warm up. We'd have to go to our swimming lessons at the, in the lake and it would be like really cold in the morning. And I'm talking about in the middle of summer. So, um, you know, not everybody has the same experience. And of course, if this is winter for you, then you're going to experience the growth of the sun. Those of us who are in the Northern hemisphere are, you know, this is as good as it gets in terms of the the height of uh, the sun. And uh, I've said this before, it just seems like it's getting warmed up, pardon the pun, before we have to go back and start to lose the light. It just, to me, is unfathomable, really. But anyway, um, so this is going to be uh, ushering in a period of fun for you. Uh, romance. Uh, Venus goes into Gemini on the very next day on the 22nd. And that is a time of, um, you know, having Venus going into that fourth house can smooth things over if there was some kind of misunderstanding, but it can also bring money. So if you've been, you know, some kind of a contract and it wasn't, you know, it was kind of impeding some sort of um, deal, real estate deal, this is going to maybe be the time when you reap the rewards of that deal. Um, that can also be sprucing up your home. Venus can be slapping on a new coat of paint or buying new furniture, investing in, you know, things that make your house look better. On the 28th is the new moon at seven degrees of Cancer. Now, it's very interesting because Cancer rules the fourth house of home and family, but in your chart, Pisces, it's actually the fifth house. So you have both of those energies of the, the new moon in this domestic area, but in your chart, it's actually in the area of romance and fun. So you might just be... Um, Having having um, an increase in pleasurable activities, parties, and, and whatnot, or maybe there is a special somebody you're meeting. Because I really do feel for those people who are single, or, I mean, I hate to say it, but even if you're coupled, you might even have an affair. Maybe this is a prelude to that, because this is more romantic. But in the... the the end of, um, whatchamacallit, October, when Mars goes into that fifth house, that could be like hot and heavy. Um, and then on the same day, 28th, your ruler Neptune goes retrograde at 25 degrees of Pisces. 
in the first house. So um, you may find out something about yourself, Pisces, that you really weren't aware of or you were like kind of in denial over, I would say. Neptune retrograde can be very um, much a reality check about something where the person's like, oh, I didn't realize that. And they didn't realize it because they weren't really tuning into whatever it is. If they had been, they would have um, admitted as much. And something may, maybe it's something that happens that forces you to look at a particular situation in your life and see it with new eyes. But it's having to do with how you carry yourself, how you present yourself, what you look like. Um, you know, like um, an example would be, let's say that you normally don't take many pictures of yourself. Maybe somebody takes a picture of you and you're not really tuned into it and you happen to see yourself and you're like, oh my gosh, that's what I look like. And you decide to change that. Um, or something about the way that you act. Um, that could be a tool. And it can be just something in general. And I feel like with that Saturn retrograde in the 12th, that that might have some connection on a different level. Okay, well, that's what I have for you, Pisces. I hope that this resonated. If you would like a personal reading, I am promoting my double readings, deep dive readings, um, hour of natal chart analysis, hour of transits for a special price, whole enchilada, hour of natal interpretations with a full length tarot reading, special price, standalone readings. Thanks for listening. Have a great month. Take care. Bye.